A few days ago, I told you guys about neuromorphic architecture that could operate virtual bodies in a virtual world. Well, yeah, they've put them in a spider robot. Not too dissimilar to my favorite, which was a spider robot operated by actual miniature human brains grown from human stem cells, but still really exciting. While growing actual human brains has been a solution for operating in a three-dimensional space, because AI just doesn't do a very good job of operating in three dimensions, it also doesn't do a particularly good job of operating a three-dimensional body, because that requires nonlinear thought. When we're talking about linear thought, we're talking about A to B to C. When we're talking about nonlinear, we're talking about having to take ideas from different areas and combining them in new ways. AI simply can't do it, but human brains can do it. Or neuromorphic architecture that mimics the spiking actions in our own brains. This is taking the idea of AI, which we already try to make look similar to human brain architecture, and actually using the spiking potential, virtual spikes that we would see across our own neurons, and that includes some degree of randomness. In the virtual 3D body, these guys actually made a lobed brain and found out that they were able to communicate with each other, but they needed to take the virtual spiking, the random spiking, down a notch so it wouldn't have what might be considered a virtual seizure. What they found when placing the architecture of a virtual brain into a real body, it was able to navigate through a three-dimensional space. That's what it's actually going to look like to our spider drone. Oh, and you may ask, why a spider? Why are we putting everything in a spider? It's because all roads lead to crab. You may not know that because it's a zoology joke that everything eventually evolves to look like a crab. It's just a really good body plan. Incidentally, it is quite possible that if we find life on other planets, we'll find crabs. They won't be related to the crabs that are here, but since it's evolved again and again, yeah. I don't love crabs, namely because I'm allergic to them, but I respect them. It's also going to be less likely to just fall over like a lot of the humanoid bots we see. You may wonder, how are they actually recording information? Well, that's a concept called a memorister when it comes to technology. It remembers that the spiking potential was there and stores that action potential between the virtual neurons. Essentially, it remembers that the neuron fired, so the next time it fires, it's going to be quicker. That means that we can create a robot that remembers the actions it takes, and perhaps can remember a space more easily the next time it sees a new space, because it remembers the process of actually navigating it for the first time. That is not dissimilar at all to how our brains work. It's going to be similar for robots when it comes to navigating, but it's also going to be similar for different tasks, including operating a body. I could see this applied where you take the program that was developed in one body, and then place it in another, and it'll probably learn it a little bit faster, but that is yet to be seen. Now you may wonder, what is the application of this kind of technology? How is it useful? You may wonder, what is the application of this? Well, a lot of the robots that we have are extremely power hungry. In order to get them to work, especially when they are tiny robots, they're going to need a more efficient system. The processing for this is a whole lot cheaper and more effective than trying to use our traditional AI models to do so. What I think this could be applied to are going to be the beta voltaic cells. These take radioactive substances like carbon-14, which is an unstable version of carbon and is also a byproduct of nuclear reactors. Researchers have combined them with more traditional batteries creating hybrids. That way, it can actually take the beta decay and turn that into energy while also charging. So if there's an immediate need for a charge, it can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, when it's in rest, it's going to be pulling energy off of it. This could be really useful for smaller robots. As for why we need a wide variety of spider bots, I don't know. I'm just really excited for them. Yes, they'll probably have military applications, but can, can I have one as a pet? One that I don't have to feed a glucose drip and keep alive? Because this, this seems awesome.